Je suis un Asuke <laughs> Tarangoni naran karobela kabo airport first in corner. Momo be siri ngambia jang amuye nyantolti purka jise nungo soto aninkurango menti tati lo momo obye kono. Nyinkamala jibor sila kuta jamale be didala. Ke janjandi aninke etala purka jamala sulosi. Purka kuran siri ngo di jamala OIC Gambia project be jose rikela aninka sembe lafake na wekla transformers nyola wale mo ila masingo lo meni yalonko ibe dulalto taring anila kuran julo lo meni be janjandi ndulalto. Mena polis kunda mako ila jamana la banjora ngolto le meni yalonko mbe nindilale inyante muna faile ila nyami Fierol Koto, Membe Gambia and Bedo Lukela, Dula Tankarimoti. Ni Hiruak will Membe Kokana Conference Center Lu, Kana Airport or Bedidaku, Purna Lundan Kumal Membe Gila JK Bendung, Five Star Hotel Kuto Maya Lonko, Isula Tajaman and Labang Jorango Joran de Batar La Conole. Nimbe Mufenet Membe Gambia Faraman Sandila, Kakanyatun Katipurka in Conference Fallujia, West Africa Jang. Ninde Nyo Malu Tourism La Carola, Menu Lodu Labam Bandila Kaja Ko Gambia Tenten, Kakanyatun Katitubab Luntang La Dunim Finto La Banko Kanya. Nkana so muk yena bandero jindi dunia beye lo mena di smiling course. Kakumo suti yandi. O IC Gambia bedo kusoto bunda jamala wala na moli ye. Ka safaro yiruwande. Ka Gambia banko fango mununga yele mandi sako na kombo tubabu banko. Ka felo nyinyandi bake. Nunga si nina dimbaya lu balu nyalu falin. Wato alinga o IC Gambia fasa ba membe parendiri keka na banko ye puruka dunia la nyimbe mbaka tango jia. O IC Gambia kado kuo kebi puru nasama nafa.
Good evening and live from our studios on MDI Road. This is the news with me, Winifred Nicole. In the headlines tonight, UNICEF country representative in the Gambia presents his letters of credence to the vice president at State House. Lawmakers hone their skills on budget analysis, review, and scrutiny during a three day capacity enhancement synergy. Medical experts explain before the Truth Commission procedure and protocol observed during former President Jami's HIV and AIDS treatment program. Plus, Agriculture Minister reiterates government's commitment to attain sustainable homegrown food, this as the Gambia joins the international community to commemorate World Food Day. And the impact of the coronavirus hits hard on schools in Kenya as some private institutions risk a permanent closure due to financial constraints. Well, viewers, those are the headlines. Thanks for joining us once again. The UNICEF country representative in the Gambia, Gadon Jonathan Lewis, on Thursday presented his letters of credence to the Vice President, Her Excellency, Dr. Isatuture at State House. Pamara Baji has the details of that story. The new UNICEF country representative to the Gambia presented his letters of credence to the Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia at the State House. Gordon Jonathan Lewis had a closed-door meeting with Dr. Isa Tuture, where they discussed issues focusing on the UNICEF mission in the country and the strengthening of the historical legacy between UNICEF and the Gambia government. After the closed-door session, the UNICEF representative told the waiting press that the gist of his engagement with the Vice President focused on renewing UNICEF's commitment in expanding close collaboration. Uh, as well during that meeting, uh, uh, commit UNICEF's uh, continued support to not only the overall broad priority of children and women in the country, but specifically to continue strengthening and supporting a number of areas where UNICEF and the Office of the Vice President have been collaborating on, I must say, quite closely together for the past couple of, uh, of years to strengthen the mandate uh, that the Office of the Vice President has. UNICEF has been supporting social protecting systems in the Gambia in robust working partnerships with the Office of the Vice President and the National Nutrition Agency. Gordon Jonathan said the Vice President views UNICEF as reliable partners. All in all, it was an excellent meeting. Uh, uh, the uh, Vice President herself was very um, uh, clear in indicating that she sees UNICEF as a very uh, committed as a very uh, reliable and strategic partner uh, with all of the things related to uh, social protection in the country. A UN body supporting a sustainable future of a children. UNICEF is the largest international organization for the promotion and protection of child's rights, with a presence in more than 190 countries and territories. In the Gambia, UNICEF works with the government to deliver services for children across the country. To some legislative matters, deputies at the National Assembly are attending a three-day capacity building forum on budget analysis, review and scrutiny, courtesy of the European Union. The conclave is set to enhance parliamentarians' knowledge and skills on budgetary issues. Uminjai has more on that development. Scaling up their knowledge on budget analysis review and scrutiny through a training program facilitated by the Gambia EU Cooperation Program. The training comes amid increasing calls for financial accountability, starting with parliamentary understanding of national budgets to enhance legislative decision-making on financial matters. Lawmakers will be introduced to new areas on national budget planning, research and analysis by close of the three-day program, according to lead trainer Dominic Mendy. The objective of this discourse is to enhance skills and the ability to interrogate and derive the issues being sought in such an important instrument 
as a national budget. Our intention is to make sure that everyone stays engaged and active so that together we shall derive mechanisms for assessing and understanding our budget. Developments in the country have significantly suffered from inadequate financial governance, a crucial requirement needed in ensuring a good budget. The training is a vital part of reform undertakings to boost fiscal inclusion legislative activities directly impacting policy decisions that support sustainable human development. Elf Bongstra, EU Councillor and Deputy Head of Delegation in the Gambia, hailed the critical role parliamentarians play in budget analysis enabling inclusion and transparency. This training today aims to help lay those foundations. The majority of the current members of the National Assembly have three years' experience in performing their functions, and therefore, um, this ability to review and analyze the national budget has been growing and is work in progress. This is why we are here today, to further enhance the capacities of the National Assembly when it comes to the scrutiny of the national budget. The training is essential to yield better budgetary process and expose parliamentarians to strategies for effective budget scrutiny. This training on budget analysis, review and scrutiny provides the Honorable National Assembly members the opportunity to effectively execute and understand the entire budgetary approval process by improving the skills and understanding and exposing the National Assembly members to analytical techniques and insights to efficiently review and scrutinize oversight. At the end of this training, it is expected that a more effective and efficient budget scrutiny and oversight culture will be entrenched within the House. The European Union Initiative is moving to develop legislative skills and expertise on budgetary understanding and will add immense value to the work of deputies, according to National Assembly Speaker Mariam Jack Dentin, who described the program as a well-timed initiative. The skills that will be acquired during the course of this three-day training will help to better equip honorable members and prepare us to execute our mandate as effectively and efficiently as possible. Strengthening legislative capacity to deliver oversight functions improves both planning and policy action, which is delivered through well-informed decisions and critical analysis to ensure inclusion and accountability. Omijai, GRTS. The Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission on Thursday continue their hearing on former President Jame's HIV and AIDS treatment program. Among the witnesses who appeared before the Truth Commission was a medical expert who explained extensively the procedure and protocol observed during the treatment program. Baba Silla has more on that. An unidentified medical expert specialized in sexual and reproductive health is the latest witness to testify at the Truth Commission as it continues probes into former President Jammeh's so-called AIDS treatment program. The anonymous witness recalled the extensive training on HIV and AIDS he underwent in the United Kingdom where he was trained in clinical and laboratory procedures for viral testing. His testimony further revealed how patients with HIV and AIDS were admitted into the treatment program. I had worries, various of things, used the opportunity to emphasize that so far, from that time until today, there is no new cure for HIV so far. HIV patients, according to the unnamed witness, are also brief about the procedures involved in the treatment program and laboratory results given to them based on their concern. He testified that if anyone tests positive for HIV and AIDS, the person is advised not to donate blood to others alongside specific medical advice to ensure safety. The unidentified witness spoke extensively on the treatment program ranging from screening and admission of patients, as well as other medical advice. He further claimed that in the course of the program, protocol and procedures are also observed during testing procedures. 
After all these processes have been taken, patients are formally admitted into the medical program for the treatment of HIV and AIDS with frequent tests to investigate medical conditions after treatment. Did you encounter any of these people again? After a year or two, a couple of persons returned and uh, the process required us to find out where they were, what happened, and on what basis, and whether they would still consent to continue what was initiated uh, at the treatment center. The witness who expressed his dissatisfaction with the program due to the failure of the treatment described the scheme as an eye-opener for the public. Those who were misled uh, would never fall into such a, a trap with them, uh, not so for better use of the word trap, uh, because it affected their health significantly. Medical expert Abdullah Bachili testified next, adducing that the former president made several threats to close the Medical Research Council if they interfere with his patient. Dr. Bachili said Jamel got upset after some of the patients turned out to be positive. Now, he was disappointed that this test results still so HIV positive. That's your testimony. Because if they were all came with as he expected, I don't think that would have been the action then. In 2007, the exiled former president Yaya Jame declared that he has a cure for HIV and AIDS and order untreatable human diseases without approval from the World Health Organization. The subsequent treatment program he established caused the loss of many lives drawing serious criticism and condemnation around the world. Sittings continues next week. Reporting for the news, I am Baba Silla. Away from that, the Gambia has joined the rest of the world to mark World Food Day. Celebrations marking the 75th anniversary of the founding of the day have been scaled down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Delivering a televised statement marking World Food Day the Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Ami Fabore, said the government of the Gambia, under the leadership of President Barrow, is committed to attaining a sustainable homegrown food and nutrition security. Here is an excerpt. Due to COVID-19, this year's celebration will be downscale to exhibition locally processed food and biofortified crops, stands of nari, distribution of vegetable seeds, and simple farm equipment and sensitization on the tea. The Minister of Agriculture, under the able leadership of His Excellency President Adam Avaro, is committed to attain a sustainable homegrown food and nutrition security. This will provide the people with the necessary nutritious food for a healthy life and a growth. Meanwhile, the Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization said the 75th anniversary of the founding of the Food and Agricultural Organization is a special one, noting the importance of the theme, grow, nourish, sustain, together our actions are our future, as crucial to freeing the world of hunger and malnutrition. Let's take a listen for more on that. Colleagues and friends, the World Food Day found its origin in the birthday of FAUN on 16th October 1945. This year is a very special one for FAO and for the global fight against hunger and malnutrition. 75 years ago today, out of the debris of the World War II, millions lost their lives in the conflict. Millions more died of the starvation. Farming was devastated. The world needed to rebuild a culture and to meet the most basic of the human needs. Nations come together. FAUN was established first. And we delivered. FAO harnessed everything at our disposal. Expertise, research, 
statistics, diplomacy, to help world produce more, to feed more. You can watch the full statements by Minister of Agriculture and the FAO Director General shortly after the 10 p.m. newscast. In another development, the Senegalese ambassador to the Gambia, Basir Hussein, on Thursday paid a courtesy call on the Minister of Defense, Sheikh Omar Fai, at his office. The visit, as Fatou Janembay reports, availed Ambassador Sen the opportunity to discuss means of deepening bilateral relations between Banjul and Dhaka. It has been a busy week of engagement for the Minister of Defense, Sheikh Omar Fai, receiving ambassadors designated to the Gambia. The latest ambassador to call on the Defense Minister is the Senegalese ambassador to the Gambia, His Excellency Basir Sen. Shortly after the closed-door meeting with the Defense Minister, the Senegalese Ambassador outlined the areas discussed with the Defense Minister, including the need to further strengthen social and economic ties. We have already the bridge, Senegal-Gambia bridge, which is a very important sign around Africa, how two countries can deal economically and socially to improve their relation. We have uh, Sene, uh, Fleuve River, Senegambi River, OMVG. MVG. We have a, a nice organization. In few months, you will see uh, uh, important infrastructure realized on the on the on this river to to give electricity, to give uh, energy to our countries. The Senegalese diplomat said they talked about deepening military ties between the two countries. And it will be also uh, will, will be an occasion to, to, to viabilize all this area for agriculture. So what are our aim for the future is going in the economic relation to strengthen them because we are uh, living with mills, not with only democracy and ideas. We have to strengthen our economic relation, mm -hmm. and it is very, very important. Our cultural, uh, cultural relation, our social relation, also are improved every day. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Sheikh Omar Fai, as Minister of uh, of Defence, is in good relation with our Minister of Defense to, to strengthen the relation to, to, mm -hmm. to protect ourselves. The Gambia and Senegal are not only neighbors but share so much in common and also bonded by marriage. Cooperation in all frontiers is therefore crucial in the maintenance of peace and the free movement of goods and services for the well-being of the people of the two countries, said Ambassador Basir Sen. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Fatou Janimbai. Similarly, the Ministry of Tourism and Culture recently contracted Jigo Construction Limited to rehabilitate the Kerbaj stone circles under the purview of the National Center for Arts and Culture. The 2.4 rather million uh, dollar city project upon completion will give a facelift to the UNESCO World Heritage Site and by extension improve cultural and provincial tourism. Modu Bajan has more on that. Of tourism and culture emphasized the importance of upgrading the stone circle site at Kirbach in Nyanja Central River region. Hamad Enkeba made the remarks during a 2.4 million dollar contract signing engagement with Jigo Construction Company Limited, meant to rehabilitate the stone circle site, an area with a UNESCO World Heritage designation. First, Kirbach stone circle site is a UNESCO World Heritage site since 2006 and therefore offers great potential in attracting visitors. However, the site, including the perimeter fence, exhibition rooms, and the water supply have been dilapidated over the years. Moreover, this site is located in Yanija, one of the isolated areas in this country. The district has a rich and a vibrant culture which deserves to be preserved. National Center for Arts and Culture Director Hausum Sise said the rehabilitation will duly improve the outlook of the Kirbach Stone Circles area. Following the ministerial tour to heritage sites earlier this year, the NCAC on the board advice chose Kirbach Stone Circle site in Yanija as the beneficial site. 
this decision was informed by the fact that this site is one of the most interesting I mean, stone circle sites in the country, especially for its V-shaped stone. But still today, historians or archaeologists do not understand its significance. The NCAC has successfully conducted the procurement process, and Jigo Construction has emerged winner. Jigo is, of course, a reputable construction company, which we are certain will give us a great job, which is befitting this UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Chief Executive Officer of Jigo Construction Company Limited, Amadou Jigo, expressed appreciation for being considered to facelift the Kirbaj Stone Circles site. He reassured that they will work in earnest to professionally finish the contract in four months. I would like to begin expressing our gratitude with a thank you to the contract committee that granted us this contract. It is a great honor to us, Jigo Construction Limited, and to me personally, as it serves as a motivation to continue our endeavor as our company broadens its scope of action. I would like to reassure you all of first class delivery without the compromise of standard, for we are confident and certain in our ability to deliver nothing sort of standard. In a presentation, a staff of NCAC Michael Campbell outlined the redesigned outlook of the cultural heritage area a move which can be a huge boost to the country's upcountry tourism promotions. The National Assembly member for Nyanija, Amadou Kamara, equally approved of the rehabilitative gesture. Kamara maintained that the activity can indeed be for cultural tourism and employment by extension. I'm in fact more delighted being the National Assembly member and also being a native of that area because Kerbajistan Circle is, an, uh, is part of the history of this country. It's, an, uh, site, it's a site that I have learned in school, and I've seen people, tourists, come in there, both local, international. And also, when we took over in 2017, I've been advocating for it because it's a site, it's, a, it's definitely seriously dilapidated. So coming up with this from the Ministry of Tourism and also from the National Center for Arts and Culture, I think it is a step in the right direction. And I just wish to, on behalf of the people of Nyanija, sincerely thank them. Aside from the Kankurag Masquerade, the stone circles in Kirbaj and elsewhere in the Gambia, are the country's only UNESCO World Heritage items. With this and the socio-economic importance of the cultural site, tourism and culture officials are looking forward to a better branded site, targeting the Mongo Park Oblix in Karantaba as their next rehabilitation project. For the news, this is Modu Bajan. The Department of Information Services under the Ministry of Information on Thursday launched a public information campaign for the Gambia Social Registry. Jan Keturi attended the ceremony in Birkama and filed in this report. This is the launching of the public information campaign for the Gambia Social Registry data collection tool. The objective of the campaign is to create awareness on the upcoming data collection exercise by Jibos. The public information campaign strategy which is being spearheaded by my department, the Department of Information Services, outlines a conceptual structure that provides direction and guides action on creating awareness about the Gambia Social Registry, a key element of the SPS. The Governor of West Coast Region, Lamin Sane, highlighted the significance of data collection, which is said to be a challenge for the Gambia. Governor Sane urged participants to make best use of the initiative. The launch of our information campaign that we call social registry is very key, is very important. Uh, this will pave way to help the uh, Solicitor Generals and other partners to gather accurate information for more important planning within all the sectors in the country. Social registry is a sort of a beginning in this country where people are supposed to come together to get accurate information so that information could be used accurately for planning purposes. The tool, according to many, will serve as an entry point for poor and vulnerable individuals to be potentially included in and benefit from social protection programs once they registered. For programs to be effective, you have to make sure you target the most vulnerable or the most needy or the people that you really want to benefit from the program or project that you are implementing. And this has ever been a problem. Whenever a project comes into this country, whenever a program comes into the country, the first thing that people will say, let us do an assessment. 
and woe betide when it is an emergency. By the time you do your assessment, by the time you compile your report, by the time you get into action to do your intervention, it's a time lapse and then uh, people keep on suffering. Qualities of the tool include national database for all households as a gate to all social programs, document data on the socioeconomic status of households, amongst others. The statistician General Nyakase Sanyang urged communities to not only register but to give concrete information during the program. We embark a lot on, on the message that we're going to send across. It is important to households to understand that. This is just not a one-off program. And that the, our activity will involve taking documents, that is identification documents, birth certificates of household members. So don't try to give us information that is not right. Because if you said you, you have 1,000 people in your household, you must produce documents of all those people. So there is a question where else. Uh, I, I want to take this opportunity to let the public know that this is a very important activity for the government. The Gambia government, in collaboration with the World Bank, is supporting the development of the social registry as a component of social safety net project. Once completed, according to officials, the registry will serve as a single entry point for the various social protection programs in the Gambia. The caravan team will be traveling to the provinces tomorrow, Friday, to sensitize communities on the significance of the registration program. For the news, I am Jenke Ture. Paradise Foundation, a local NGO, in partnership with the Ministry of Women, Children and Social Welfare and UNFPA, on Thursday convened a day-long orientation for media practitioners on gender-based violence. The sensitization program held in Kololi brought together different practitioners from the print and electronic media institutions across the country. As we hear in this report by Usman Mane, the refresher training seeks to enhance reporting on issues of gender-based violence. There are different forms of gender-based violence including physical, sexual, emotional and harmful traditional practices. These practices are daily occurrence in families and communities targeting the most vulnerable, mostly women and girl child. Men are also survivors of gender-based violence. Reporting cases of violations to relevant authorities is increasingly becoming a concern due to several factors, compounded by misinformation on reporting issues around gender-based violence in the media. This informed a day-long orientation for media practitioners organized by Paradise Foundation and partners. In her welcome remarks, Aisha Balde of Paradise Foundation explained the activities of her organization over the past years in communities and women empowerment. She disclosed plans to establish psychological support center for survivors of gender-based violence. Gender-based violence means both men and women, but we focus a lot on the women because it's women who are more vulnerable than the men. Yes, we have uh, men being beaten up, men being attacked, men being raped, men being uh, emotionally abused, which is more common actually. We are getting calls from the helpline indicating that some men are, are emotionally traumatized because of their families. There are some cultural practices which become normal or everyday practices that we have to look out for as parents because the world has changed and the mindsets have changed. Alusar of UNFPA underscored the importance of the initiative noting that misinformation of gender-based violence on media platforms have far-reaching consequences. We know people who suffer from GBV are stigmatized. Um, there is a culture of silence surrounding GBV, so that with misinformation, some of those unfortunate situations are amplified, and uh, this may stall our efforts to um, stop the practice of GBV in this country. We know that female constitute about 51% of the population, so that if females are subjected to um, some of these violations, it would be very, very unfortunate because uh, we know how much this can impact on the, on the lives of um, the majority of the population of this country, that is women. The Nature of the Ministry of Women, Children and Social Welfare 
highlighted the need for more capacity building for media practitioners on GBV. We need to be investigating on issues and report facts. Because sometimes people will say that they, they don't want to talk to the media. It is not that victims don't want to talk to the media. But the media should ensure that confidence is built. They should win the confidence of the victims by ensuring that information that goes out to the public is concrete, is factual, and is evidence-based. Commenting on rape cases, Madame Toure stated plans to amend legal instruments in line with current realities. Legal practitioner Hadi Dondenjai Jabi and public relation officer of the Gambia Police Force, Superintendent Lamin Jai, also gave presentations on protection of survivors and the role of police in mitigating gender-based violence. Usman Mane, GRTS. The government of the Gambia has reopened schools after months of closure due to the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic. While GRTS camera crew in the Upper River region went round the schools in Basse to assess their level of preparedness amid the COVID-19 in the country, our regional correspondent Seidu Kamara led the initiative and now reports. After closing school for about seven months due to the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic in the country, however, authorities have now decided to reopen schools amid strict advice to adhere to the safety precautionary measures in an effort. Crew visited some schools, including Nasir Ahmadiyya Senior Secondary School, to find out the level of preparedness amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The principal of Nasir Ahmadiyya School, Kramo Ture, highlighted some of the mechanisms put in place to ensure that students and teachers are protected from contracting the airborne disease. Uh, the security will 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 ensure is that everybody wanting to enter the school must first put on a face mask. If they are not on face mask, they are not allowed to enter. So once you you have a face mask mask on, then we allow you in, and then you wash your hands. We have uh, wash hand basins there. We have four of them at four, at four uh, separated apart so that uh, people are not are not uh, congested. So from there, they will also check your, uh, your temperature. These are uh, the, the, the protocols that we observe at the gate. Principal Ture took us around the school for a conducted tour of the classrooms. He explained that each student is allocated a table and a chair in a classroom that is not exceeding 35 students to avoid overcrowding. We divided our classes into um, Two, two, except for the for the science classes, so that uh, stretch our uh, space requirement. Uh, we, we use all our laboratories as classroom. We use our computer class as a classroom, and also use our uh, part of our assembly hall also is used as classroom. So th that's the arrangement at the uh, at, at that level. Students uh, on must when they uh, when they are in because the first thing you cannot enter the school without a face mask so that means any student who enter the school must have a face mask so for his part the school head boy Cherno Mohammed Job said his team is working closely with the school authorities to ensure that students adhere to the regulatory measures by wearing face masks observing regular hand washing and testing of the body temperature before entering the school me and my counselors are working with the school administration to see to it that any student entering the campus without these safety protocols that are being put in place, not following them, the person would not be allowed to enter inside the school campus. My message to them is let them all try to come with fixed marks and when and before entering the school campus, let them be tested to know their status. To if they let them always abide by the protocols that are being put in place because these protocols are put in place for them to for it to protect us from this coronavirus but the school principal also raised concern over the inadequate space in the school in order to adjust to the new normal in school while considering the plight of teachers 
especially during these difficult moments of a global pandemic. Before this physical problem, much more with this kind of arrangement classes are divided into two. That's why we use all our laboratories as classrooms. We use our computer lab as a classroom, and we use part of our assembly hall as a classroom. The authorities should understand that very well and uh, see how best to adjust in some areas, especially financial aspect of it. Students, teachers, and staff, as well as visitors, have to go through these procedures in a daily basis at the school gate before they can be allowed. That is testing of the body temperature, wearing face masks, and washing of hands with soap and running water, geared toward protecting the students and teachers from contracting the coronavirus. Said Meanwhile, the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education is pleased to release the results of the 2020 Gambia Basic Education Certificate Examination. A media release from the Ministry says the total number of candidates who were entered for the examination was 23,039 students, of which 10,083 male and 12,956 female. A total of 26 candidates scored aggregate 6 in 2020 compared to 21 in 2019. However, for the first time, six candidates scored 1 in all their nine subjects, and they are Fatumata Sise of Ndaus Comprehensive Upper Basic School, Fatumata Jaune of Ndaus Comprehensive Upper Basic School, Ibrahima Jalo of St. Charles Luanga Upper Basic School, Seku Dabo of St. Theresa's Upper Basic School, Loli Sedi Lee of St. Theresa's Upper Basic School, Seinabu Sibi of St. Theresa's Upper Basic School. The other 20 candidates are Omar Cham of ABC Upper Basic School, Mohamed Augusta Sar of ABC Upper Basic School, Sili Jahate of Barra Upper Basic School, Jaina Bajob of Gambia Methodist Upper Basic School, Mohamed Ba of Latikunda Upper Basic School, Binta Cham of Latikunda Upper Basic School, Mohamed Lamin Kanaji of Mindao Upper Basic School, Awaseka of Ndaus Comprehensive Upper Basic School, Jacob Pierre Gomez of Presentation of Mary Basic Cycle School, Fatu Bintu Tarawale of Presentation of Mary Basic Cycle School, Fanta S. Jalo of Redeemers International Upper Basic School, Baba Kanding Cham of St. Charles Luanga Upper Basic School, Augustus Sanka of St. Charles Luanga Upper Basic School, Jarata and Suso of St. Joseph Basic Cycle School, Fatima Sise of St. Peter's Upper Basic School, Aisha Balajo of St. Theresa's Upper Basic School, Lindia Mendy Behol of St. Theresa's Upper Basic School, Kalib Gabjidi of Star Preparatory Upper Basic School, Kadijatu Bella Bah of Sukuta uh, Wanse Upper Basic School, Mariama Fofana of Yunus Upper Basic School. According to the release, candidates are to receive their individual results from their respective schools. Admission to grade 10 should be based on passes in core subjects to be decided by boards of governors and not exceeding aggregate 42, the dispatch concludes. Well, time now to take our first break. News from outside the Gambia is up next. Do stay. Welcome back and over now to news from outside the Gambia. In Kenya, the reopening of schools is underway. However, many private schools may not reopen at all. They have for years been lightly dependent on school fees for survival, and the recent pandemic forced many of them to shift to other businesses to stay afloat. Some institutions that were deep in debt were forced to shut their doors for good. Details in the CGTN report was suspended in Kenya. Good morning. These grade four students are back in class at the Mwe Brethren School, a private institution, following a phased reopening of schools in Kenya. It has not been easy. They were among the lucky ones. Thousands of students who attended private schools before learning was suspended are enrolling in new institutions. It is thought hundreds of private schools across Kenya have shut their doors permanently unable to cope with the challenges of COVID-19. For those that have reopened like this one, it is through sheer determination. 
To save the school from growing fast, Beatrice and her husband turned the school into a chicken farm. There are now close to 5,000 chickens here, housed in classrooms and the dining hall. For Mrs. Maina, it's because of these chickens that her school exists today. We have bills to cover, to pay, and it has not been easy. And that is why as a school, we also went into chicken layering. Though so we cleared some classes so that we can accommodate our people. When you heard of Corona... The school calendar was meant to resume in 2021, but the sudden reopening of schools caught them off guard. There's also the question of teachers. Many of those who previously taught here will not be returning. Some of them went and ventured into other businesses and they have indicated they are not coming back. So we will do interviews for other teachers. They are those that have come back. And they are needed. The government's considering November as the official opening of the school term. We should be bold enough to continue to observe them for about one or two weeks before we, as to whether we can risk having larger numbers. There are plans by the government to provide $70 million in concessionary loans to private schools. But until then, they'll have to fend for themselves. For the chickens at Brethren School, a new home has been found on a farm not too far away. They'll be gone by the time the remaining students report to school. Robert Magelo, CGTN, Nairobi, Kenya. Economies from IMF and World Bank predict the world economy is having the worst recession since 1930. But they also say this crisis may help build a more resilient and inclusive global economy for the future. As the global economy tries to get back on track during the coronavirus pandemic. A durable economic recovery is only possible if we beat the pandemic and we beat it everywhere. Stepping up vital health measures is our imperative, as is fiscal and monetary support to households and firms. The IMF also released its latest World Economic Outlook this week, predicting global GDP will contract by 4.4 percent in 20. Well, we will go with a short break. We will be back in just a moment. The report courtesy of the Central Focus Office. for that. Well, that was all in this edition of the news, but before we take leave of you, a look at the main headlines once again. UNICEF country representative in the Gambia has presented his letters of credence to the vice president at State House. Lawmakers are honing their skills on budget analysis, review and scrutiny during a three-day capacity enhancement synergy. Medical experts have been explaining before the Truth Commission procedure and protocol observed during former President Jame's HIV and AIDS treatment program. Plus, a Minister of Agriculture has reiterated government's commitment to attain sustainable homegrown food. This as the Gambia joins the international community to commemorate World Food Day. And the impact of the coronavirus has hit hard on schools in Kenya as some private institutions risk permanent closure due to financial constraints. Well, viewers, that was all in this edition of the News at 10 from me, Winifred Nicole, and the entire news team. Thanks for watching and do have a pleasant night.
ne ka rew mi gëna tuti ci Africa waye terawul dina dalal ñaar li xew xew bi gëna mak dajale kilifa yi ci aduna ci 2022 ci lolu nguuri Gambia dafa sos kurel guñnaan OIC Gambia OIC Gambia ñu sas len lepp lu aju ci dajale xaliss ak it jumtu kay yi ñoo wara jëfëndeko ngir soppi kanam bi dëkk bi ci anam buñ mësu ta gis lepp ngir Gambia am ndam ci dajje bu mag bi nga xamne rewi islami ci aduna yep dañu ko fi amal lu wara mat ñaar fukki tali US dañu ko tabax ci rew mi Batil Hadin Highway itam dañu ko yaatal bu bax diganti airport besting corner aha kay askani gambia ajo won nañ ndox mu sel ak kurang bu doy ba taxna dañu amal ay pexé yuy indi ndox ak it sédalé ko ci anam bo xamné ñepp dañu ci contant nonu oic gambia dañu ful yok ñaar yoon anam bi nawek di joxé ndox ci rew mi ci jamono ji ba légui oic gambia dañu dolel police utal len ay jumtu kay yu xérañ bo le kok di len tagat ngir gambia yépp am karangé tabax nañu international conference center bi gëna mak ci Afrique Saoudienta ak five star hotel bu mengok jamano ak it yombal dem bek dikka bi ci anam bu muccu ayib yëkëti dara jay banjul international airport ba mu mëna dalal gan ñu mag ñi ño xaar OIC Gambia dal mbokay pare na jël Gambia def ko muy place bu gëna mat conference ci Afrique Saoudienta ñu war diko fi amalé dañu and ak suñuy natango yi yëngatu ci tourism ngir dëggaral tollu wayi rew mi di smiling coast Gambia ci teral ay ganam ak fuñu muñti joggé ci aduna OIC Gambia dina amal ay lenkalo yu fessal tay yokal xereñ ak kom kom ci rew mi ci gatal OIC Gambia project dañu amal ay liggéey dañu suxat kom kom bi dañu gawal suñu yokuté dañu tara rew mi ak nekk ni askani Gambia kon nak ñu ñepp suñu waréf la nañu andandor ak OIC Gambia jappalé ko ci anam bu rafet ngir ñun ñepp am ndam ci dalal xew xew bu mag bi ci digënté réew islam yi ci adina ci atum 2022 fi ci Gambia OIC Gambia dé né nañu nañ tabax tay ngir taral élite fellow Gambians and distinguished viewers. Tomorrow, 16th of October, will yet mark another day set aside by the United Nations, United Nations